It could happen any time. Scientists warn of Alaska tsunami threat. A retreating glacier is increasing the risk of a catastrophic landslide and tsunami within a few decades, researchers say. Now, warming temperatures up in Alaska associated with the grand solar minimum and the descent into the next ice age have caused the retreat of a glacier that helps support a steep mile-long slope along the flank of a fjord in Prince William Sound, about 60 miles east of Anchorage. With only a third of the slope now supported by ice, the scientists said that a landslide could be triggered by an earthquake, prolonged heavy rain, or even a heat wave that could cause extensive melting of the surface snow. Now, while the slope has been moving for decades, the researchers have estimated that a sudden huge collapse was possible within a year, and likely within two decades. It could happen any time, but the risk just goes way up as the glacier recedes, said Anne Leljedal, an Alaska-based hydrologist with the Woods Hole Research Center. That's in Massachusetts. And she's part of the team. Now, Alaska's Department of Natural Resources, after being briefed on the findings, issued a statement Thursday afternoon warning that an increasing likely landslide could generate a wave with devastating effects on fishermen and recreationalists. And we do have a simulation coming up if you stick with us. Computer modeling showed that a collapse of the entire slope, roughly estimated to be 500 million cubic meters of rock and dirt, or several hundred times the volume of Hoover Dam, could cause a tsunami that would start out at several hundred feet. And 20 minutes later, when it reached Whittier, a town at the head of another narrow fjord 30 miles away, the wall of the water would still be 30 feet high. Now here we're looking at the, the Tuya Bay simulation from 1958. But it will give you a good idea of what we're talking about. As a hazard, it's really worrisome, said another researcher, Hig Higman, who studied geologic hazards and runs an organization called Ground Truth Based in Seldovia, Alaska. Dr. Laljudal said that although their findings have yet to be peer reviewed, we realize we need to let people know. She said the research, the researchers hoped that the money would be made available for near real-time monitoring of the slope. They could provide a warning if a landslide and tsunami occurred. This would include, uh, but not exclusive of, tiltimeters and other things, including cameras, that people could watch remotely to see any micro shifts in that slope. Now, the fjord, Barry, Barry Arm, and other nearby waters are frequently visited by tourists and fishing boats, and the surrounding land is a popular area with hunters. In good weather, potentially hundreds of people could be in the area. Although it has a year-round population of only several hundred, Whittier is typically a disembarkation point for thousands of cruise ship passengers headed inland to Anchorage and points north. Can you imagine if dozens of cruise ships got hit by a tsunami in one of these bays? Tsunami-induced landslides are rare, but have occurred in Alaska and elsewhere. Perhaps the most famous occurred on July 9, 1958 in Lutuya Bay. And you're looking at the simulation right now. And this is on the Alaska's southeast coast. When a nearby earthquake caused 40 million cubic yards of rock to slide 2,000 feet into the narrow bay, scourging of vegetation on the hillside opposite of the slide showed that the tsunami reached a maximum height of 1,720 feet. Essentially, a, gig a gigantic splash. That is the highest tsunami ever documented, ever. 
The water then rolled up the bay in a wave that was still 75 feet high when it reached the mouth, swamping several fishing boats and killing two people. More recently, a 2015 landslide at the Tijan Fjord. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. In a remote area west of Yakutat, Alaska, spawned a tsunami that was initially more than 600 feet high. And a landslide on the west coast of Greenland in 2017 created a wave initially more than 300 feet high that destroyed much of a nearby fishing village, killing four people. Now, a slide at Barry Arm would be potentially much bigger in terms of energy involved. It's a whole different class than we've ever studied after the fact, much less before it happens. The researchers from 14 organizations and institutions, including Ohio State University, the University of Southern California, and the Anchorage and Fairbanks campuses of the University of Alaska, only began studying the Barry Arm area about a month ago as part of NASA Finance Project to study a landmass movement across North American Arctic. Dr. Higman was aware of several areas in Alaska that had landslide risk, but it was his sister, Melissa Higman, an artist who alerted him to the potential hazard at Barry Arm. Aware of her brother's work, she was on a tourist boat in the arm when she saw the slope, which looked to her as if it had fractures, suggesting it was slowly sliding. She took some photographs and sent them to her brother. The rest is history. Dr. Higman studied satellite imagery and determined that the slope had indeed been sliding over time. Additional analysis showed that the rate of movement at times had been high. Between 2009 and 2015, the landslide moved downhill 600 feet, leaving a large scar. I don't know if we can see it here, but that would be a lot of material to come into this bay. The researchers say that permafrost or perma permanently frozen ground may exist in the area and may be helping to keep the slope stable. The violent shaking of an earthquake could cause the slope to collapse, and Alaska is in the, among the most earthquake-prone areas in the world, clearly. We've seen some major activity over the last few years in that region. And Whittier, in fact was heavily damaged by a tsunami during the 1964 Alaska earthquake, the second most powerful earthquake ever recorded in human history. But gravity can cause a slope to fail as well, especially if it becomes saturated with water during times of heavy rainfall or if heat waves melt surface snow in those cases. Water can act as a lubricant, making it more likely that land will be pulled down by gravity. And the rest will be history. Will there be a landslide the size of the 1958 tsunami? Well, of course there will be. It's just a matter of time. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when you live in the tsunami zone. Be safe. We love you. Share this with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. 